If you were arrested for domestic violence, but you are actually the person who was the victim, then this video is for you. I'm going to be giving you my top three tips on things that you need to do right now to make sure that your charges get dropped and that you don't end up being the victim a second time by getting convicted of something that you didn't do. My name is Veronica. I'm an attorney here in California and I help people put their cases behind them so that they can enjoy their lives and their futures. I'm also the creator of a course called Defeat the DVRO in which I teach you how to represent yourself at your restraining order hearing and win everything that you need to know start to finish. So if that is something that you are also dealing with and something you're interested in, make sure you get your your free first class in the course via the link down below. Okay, so let's jump right in. Three things that if you are the victim of domestic violence and you were arrested and accused of it, you need to do right now. So this situation is actually not uncommon. I get comments on YouTube, TikTok pretty much every day, multiple times a day saying, how could you help abusers? This is sick, on and on. And that's fine, I understand why. But the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that Many times the person who was arrested for domestic violence is actually the victim. Sometimes even the person who called the police for help, but the police come out and they make a split second decision on who to arrest. And now all of a sudden you're dealing with this case and the possibility of having a conviction on your record. So actually victims of domestic violence are victims of this very unfair system too. So if you find yourself in this situation, here are the three things you need to do. Number one, as soon as you get out of jail, take photographs of your injuries. I don't care that the cops took photographs. Who knows how good their photographs are, right? They arrested you. They're not there to document that you were actually the injured party, not at all. And sometimes the police will take months to turn those photos over to the DA you won't have a copy of them, your attorney won't have a copy of them. So take the best photographs that you can of every injury that you have and take photographs of your hands, of the front of your hands, of the back of your hands. Take as much evidence as you can right now. You might not know exactly what the police and what the alleged victim, what they're saying that you did. And so you wanna have that evidence. If they're saying that you punched the other person in the mouth and you don't have anything on your knuckles, I want that photograph. So make sure you do that, put those photographs in a safe place. If the other party has access to your iCloud, etc. Make sure that you send them to an email address that person doesn't know. Whatever you need to do to protect those, keep them safe. Number two, if you have ever told a family member, a friend, if you have posted in an online forum talking about how this person was abusive, if you have journal entries that are dated in some way that is provable, then make sure that you capture all of that evidence. This is something your attorney can potentially use to bolster your defense. Basically, this refutes the claim that, okay, after you got caught for domestic violence, after you got arrested, then you hired an attorney who came up with this claim that actually it was just in self-defense. No, if you have, you know, you posted to Reddit, you told your best friend, you wrote in your notes on your iPhone about this abuse prior to the arrest, then that can potentially be very helpful to you. Number three, hire an attorney before court to try to get the charges dropped. Yes, it is true. That they might, the DA might just look at this case, look at the police report and decide not to file the charges against you just on their own without you doing anything. That is possible. But if they don't and they file charges, it is going to be much more difficult to get them to drop the case than it is before court. The way that you do that is you have an attorney who contacts the DA, who shows them these photos that you took, who shows them if we have evidence that this isn't a new claim that you are the one being abused. And also good things about you, education, work, character letters from family and friends, all of that so that when they're looking at the police report, which whatever's in there is not going to be useful to you, right? Whatever is in there is going to justify the arrest. It is not going to look good for you. Instead of just looking at the police report, the DA will actually see all these good things about you, will see proof that, hey, we're not making this up. This really was a situation where you are the victim of domestic violence and they should be protecting you and decide not to file this and to give you a second chance and keep your record clean. If you are in this situation, I am sorry that this is happening to you. It's unfortunate and it is not uncommon. I have been able to help many people get their charges dropped before court so that they can keep their record clean, which if this is your first arrest, especially if you're young, you have your whole future ahead of you. The last thing you need is a conviction for domestic violence on your record when you were just the victim. I hope you found this video helpful. If you do need help with a case in California, feel free to give me a call. You can find my number down below. You can also book a consultation there. And if you did find it helpful, please don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook.